Okay, here's the thing. A lot of people are still confused about iPads and where does iPad actually fit in? You know, is iPad just a giant iPhone screen or is iPad a laptop replacement? What is it and how do I actually get most out of this device? You know, before we go any further, I think it's really important for us to clear our mindsets. iPads are not designed to replace your laptops. They will never do that. You know, laptops are designed for a specific use case and so is iPad, and they can't just replace one another. Surely there's an overlap. Surely there are tasks that you perform on iPad can be performed on laptop and vice versa. And that's how they become quite good as a complementary devices, but they can never replace one or the other. Um, yes, there are more tasks that I perform today on an iPad that I used to on my laptop. And yes, experience is much better on iPad, but that doesn't mean that iPad has now replaced my laptop. So with that mindset, let's jump into the detail. Okay, if there's one area where iPad really shines is that deep focus and planning. Now, a lot of my days are spent in meetings and prior to the meeting, there's a lot of planning sessions. And sometimes these meetings are brainstorming sessions with you know, a large group of attendees. Whether it's the meeting itself or the planning before the meeting or setting the goals and, you know, illustrating your work. And for all those scenarios, iPad is actually brilliant. Let me explain. I'm about to jump into a meeting and I have some ideas in my head that I want to talk about. So rather than having my notebook and my laptop, I have everything on my iPad. So I'll be using my iPad in the meeting in different ways, but before I go into the meeting, I have all my ideas written on my iPad using my Apple Pencil. And because I'm using my Apple Pencil, I'm actually writing and drawing on the screen. It sits better in my head rather than typing in. So for that reason, I use my Apple Pencil and the iPad to draw all my ideas before I go into any meeting or any brainstorming session. And when I'm in that session, it's so much easier for me to just sketch on the iPad and share the screen with everyone so we can follow through the planning. Um, so for example, in the past, we used to use whiteboards or sticky notes. You know, now I don't use any of that because I've got my iPad and it's a perfect device for that. You can use different apps such as Freeform or even Figma. But once you've done that, you can actually share that with the attendees, which is really good and really handy because I usually have follow-up sessions. So once I've done that meeting, I'll go back to the notes Everyone has those notes as a reference point and we continue from where we left off. So for focus groups, planning, meetings, you know, it's the ultimate device in my opinion. Okay, the second use case is very relevant for most of us. You know, a lot of us don't work in office anymore. We work remotely or we work from home or, you know, we work uh, meeting different clients in different, different areas and different cities. And for all those scenarios, iPad is absolutely brilliant. You know, I always recommend a connected iPad because it's always connected to internet using a 5G SIM. So that way you can take meetings on the go, you can call people, you can you know, send emails, you can receive files. Uh, because if you don't have a connected iPad, you always have to rely on public Wi-Fi and which is also not very secure. So I recommend anyone who's looking for an iPad get a connected one because there will be times where you wish you had a connected iPad and believe me, I've been there before. So that's why you know I started with a Wi-Fi iPad about years ago and I think about four or five years since I've always gone with the connected iPad. So I take my iPad anywhere I go, whether it's a client meeting, whether it's going to a cafe, whether it's going to a friend's house. And then I, you know, I just turn it on and start using it as my normal uh, workstation. And there's everything on there. You know, nowadays a lot of apps are optimized for iPad. So when it comes to like Microsoft apps, when it comes to Google apps, I get pretty much the same experience I get using my laptop. Yes, it doesn't still replace my laptop. And I'm going back to the point I made initially in this video. It's not a laptop replacement because there are certain tasks that I couldn't do on this device when I'm working um, uh, remotely. Um, I'm using my portable workstation. But it's a portable workstation, which means I can take it anywhere with me. And it does majority of the work, but still I need to go back and refer to my laptop, go back and use my laptop for anything that I need to finish off. Okay, the next use case or category is particularly for creators like myself. Uh, so I do a lot of video editing and photo editing. I create a lot of content. So for me, it's really important for something that is portable, is versatile, because such as like scripting, it's not about just writing your scripts down. You have to sketch your scripts, you know, create a mind map and create a flow. For that, Apple Pencil is absolutely brilliant. And once I've done that, I can type in those boxes using the magic keyboard. So it kind of flows very nicely. And then also as a photographer, I edit a lot of photos. Actually, I did all my photos on iPad because of the precision of Apple Pencil Pro, precision of touchscreen, and the display on the iPad is obviously the best display on any portable device. So for someone who's a creator like myself, this is such a no-brainer. I said must have for any creator out there. So if you're a creator who's doing content um, or you're doing any work similar to that, then this device is such a no-brainer. If you haven't already invested it, I, know, I don't know what you're waiting for. Just go and get one for yourself and definitely get an Apple Pencil or an Apple Media Keyboard because it will just elevate the overall experience of using your iPad. Okay, so that's it for today's video, but I'll surely be doing a follow-up on this because I think it's such an interesting topic. You know, a lot of us have an iPad or are thinking about getting one, but we don't always know how to get most out of this device. And for someone who's been using it for years now, and I, I think it has 
perfectly fit in within my professional work, with my personal life. I use it in different scenarios in different ways. And you know, most of the time I use it on my Magic Keyboard and sometimes I use it on my usual case. But yeah, it, it's, it's become part and parcel of my, my tech everyday carry. Um, so I'll surely be doing more videos on this. So if there's something that interests you, and, and, and yeah, stay tuned for that. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below you know, what other kind of videos you would like to see on the channel, um, especially if it's on iPad or, or anything to do with Apple. I can definitely um, make those videos for you and hopefully will help you get most of your device and, and become more productive. But yeah, that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one.